31 Things About Namr, the First Pharaoh of Egypt, Mystery and Enigmas The history of Namr is like an ancient puzzle that has captivated archaeologists and Egyptologists for centuries. Namr is a mythical figure with a transcendent reign in the history of Egypt, considered the first pharaoh of ancient Egypt. Namr was the great unifier of his population, giving rise to a civilization whose culture has transcended to the present day. In this video, we will explore the history of Egypt before the pharaohs, Namr's life, and the impact and legacy of his reign on Egyptian culture and world history. Before we delve deep, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and activate notifications to stay updated. Number 1. Egypt Before the Pharaohs it seems impossible to think of ancient Egypt without directly associating it with the figure of the pharaohs. However, the pharaonic era began with the unification of the population. Before the pharaohs, Egypt's territory was divided into two regions, Upper Egypt in the Southern Territory and Lower Egypt near the Mediterranean Sea. It's counterintuitive. If you look at a map, you'll notice that Lower Egypt is actually above Upper Egypt. Number 2. The Beginnings of Egyptian Population One of the earliest known populations in the territory of Egypt was the Nakata culture, also known as the Amration culture, which extended between 400 and 3500 years before Christ. It is known that this early culture had villages, and during this period, advanced craftsmanship developed. During these years, the first pottery and tools made from rocks appeared as well as gods with animal heads. Number 3. Evolution of the Primordial Culture Over the next two centuries, between 3500 and 3000 BC, a cultural evolution occurred. This civilization is known as the Nakata II culture or the pre-dynastic period of ancient Egypt, the period before the pharaohs. It was during this time that the first large city, Hierakonpolis, emerged with a population of 10,000 inhabitants. The first mummies and the use of iron were reported around 3,300 BC. Number 4. The Last Culture Before the Pharaohs The Nakata III culture, also known as the neo pre dynastic culture, was the last precursor to pharaonic Egypt. During this period, which extended between 3300 and 3150 BC, a dozen kings ruled in Upper Egypt. These kings are considered Dynasty Zero, but they cannot be called pharaohs because they did not rule over a unified territory. However, they did govern what would later become the first sovereign state recorded in history. This was the first time that a single power controlled different cities and towns. Up until then, the most advanced form of civilization had been the city-states of Mesopotamia, in which each government controlled a single city. Number 5. Narmer, the Ultimate Conqueror Ancient Egypt as we know it today originated in 3150 BC when the unification of the two regions that made up the territory was consolidated. Narmer is considered the great unifier of Egypt, although he was not the only conqueror of this territory. It is believed that, at the time of unification, the kings who preceded Narmer, his ancestors, had successive conquests of territories in Lower Egypt. Gradually, they took over space, and eventually, Narmer completed the conquest of the last divided territory, consolidating the unification of Egypt. His conquest was more peaceful than military, as the residents of Lower Egypt had begun to value the protection and prosperity brought by the arrival of Upper Egypt. Number 6. Could have had two names. Historically, it has been considered that Namr was the same person as Pharaoh Menes, who was long believed to be the second pharaoh of Egypt. According to Egyptian writings from around 500 BC, the first pharaoh was Menes, represented as a heroic figure who unified the country. It is said that Menes succeeded Horus, the falcon-headed god who unified and protected Egypt from invaders. Currently, the consensus among historians is that Menes is a distortion of the name Narmer. This idea gained acceptance because there is no record from the time of Narmer that includes the name of a pharaoh called Menes. 
Number 7. Founder of the First Dynasty Narmer was the first pharaoh of unified Egypt, marking the beginning of one of the most recognized and advanced ancient civilizations in history. His unification initiated a new historical and cultural period. Thus, he became the first pharaoh and not just an Egyptian king. His reign marked the start of the first dynasty of ancient Egypt, which lasted between 3150 and 2890 BC. It included at least five pharaohs, including Narmer, his successor, Horaha, and three other descendants. Number 8. His name had a curious meaning. Ancient Egyptians did not write with letters but with an ideographic system that used drawings that could be read as ideas or phonemes. Narmer's name is composed of two ideograms, Mar, a catfish, and Mer, a chisel. He was identified as a king because in the famous Narmer palette, which we will discuss shortly, his name can be found right next to the figure of the king. In this sense, Narmer literally means catfish chisel. However, there are other interpretations with different versions such as sharp-toothed catfish or fierce catfish. Number 9. Different Estimates of His Reign Start The historical consensus estimates that Namr's reign formally began in 3100 BC. However, radiocarbon dating studies suggest that it could have actually started sometime between 3273 and 2987 BC. Narmer succeeded the proto-dynastic King Ka, the last king of divided Egypt. Number 10. The Narmer Palette Reveals Information Discovered between 1897 and 1898 by the Egyptologist James Quibble, the Narmer Palette is the main architectural find that records the history of the first Egyptian pharaoh. This palette, measuring 64 centimeters in height and 42 in width, contains some of the oldest hieroglyphs on record. It is believed that the palette and its inscriptions tell the story of the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt. Number 11. Two Crowns as Confirmation On one side of the palette, the king can be seen wearing the white crown of Upper Egypt, while on the other side, he wears the red crown of Lower Egypt. This is taken as evidence that Narmer ruled both territories, precisely due to the unification. The Narmer palette is considered the world's first historical document. Number 12. A new symbol from two crowns. In the new period, a new icon emerged. The united crowns formed a single symbol. This double crown became the representation of the beginning of dynastic Egypt and the era of the pharaohs. Number 13. Considered a great statesman. Beyond his achievements and conquests and the unification of Egypt, Narmer is considered a great statesman who contributed to the strengthening of the Egyptian empire. Narmer played a pivotal role in expanding Egypt's influence toward Western Asia, enabling the importation of resources from areas like India through overland and maritime trade routes. Trade, economic exchange, and cultural interactions with other civilizations were significant features of Egypt's history. Artifacts from this period, including pottery and seals with the royal emblem, have been found in other areas, testifying to the trade networks of the time. Number 14. Artistic Conventions in the Narmer Palette While it is considered more of a historical than an artistic document, the Narmer Palette does show some key concepts of Egyptian art. For example, the representation of social hierarchies through proportions and sizes. In the palette, Narmer's figure is significantly larger than the rest of the population, demonstrating a clear correlation between his size and his important position as pharaoh. The palette also displays a form of visual storytelling that divides the narrative into scenes, a key practice of ancient Egyptian narrative art. Thus, the Narmer palette is a fundamental element for studying and evaluating the evolution of Egyptian art. Number 15. A Great Warrior Despite being a pharaoh, Narmer was an important warrior who fought alongside his army. Many objects depicting him, including seals, tablets, and even the Narmer palette, 
show the king engaged in combat and often killing his enemies mercilessly. In the palette, Namur is seen holding an enemy by the hair and wielding a mace in the other hand, about to deliver the final blow. According to the ancient historian Maindo, Namur led his army beyond the borders and achieved great glory. Number 16. Also a Founder Namur's achievements extended beyond his borders. He was essential in constructing and laying the foundations of the empire. According to May though, Namur founded many cities that would later become major urban centers of ancient Egypt, including Memphis, the first capital of the unified kingdom. Founding cities was an important role for pharaohs, often depicted proudly using a plow, a symbol of city foundation. Number 17. Impose the First Religious Cult Namur is believed to have been the founder of the city of Nekin. In this city, the pharaoh imposed the worship of the god Horus. It was the first time that a religious belief was established by state order. Number 18. Established Pharaonic Fashion Many attributes of the image we still have today of Egyptian pharaohs emerged during Namur's time. The bull's tail, later transformed into a dog's tail, symbolizing the strength required to rule the country. He also wore a shendit, a kind of kilt or loincloth typical of the ruling class. Namur was also the first king to be represented with the characteristic beard that would become a hallmark of subsequent pharaohs, including the most famous one, Tutankhamun. Number 19. Importance of his sandals. In the Namur palette, Namur is depicted followed by an assistant or servant who carries the important task of holding the king's sandals. Sandals held great significance in Egyptian symbolism as they separated the pharaoh from the land of Egypt. They symbolized the connection between the sky, the realm of the gods, the earth, and the human world. It was Namur who initiated this cult of the importance of sandals. Number 20. His marriage formed an important alliance. Namur married Princess Nithotep of Nakata, which allowed for an alliance that strengthened the power of Egypt and its cities. However, according to some versions, she might have been his daughter or the wife of Namur's successor, King Aha. Number 21. Expanded Egyptian Territory In addition to unifying ancient Egypt, Namur led expeditions and missions to expand his control. He initiated military campaigns throughout Lower Egypt, controlled rebellions, and extended his influence to regions such as Canaan and the Kingdom of Kush, modern-day Nubia, in Western Asia. He also launched significant construction projects that increased urbanization in Egyptian cities. Number 22. Never reached Mesopotamian levels. Despite the significant constructions driven by Namur, Egyptian cities never reached the magnitude of those built in Mesopotamia. This may be because the Egyptians understood the risks of developing overly large cities. Ancient Mesopotamian cities ended up being abandoned due to overuse of land and contamination of water sources. In contrast, the Egyptian cities like Sais existed and persisted for millennia. This was due to subsequent developments and evolution. The construction during Namur's time laid the foundations and models for these cities. Number 23. His death due to a hippopotamus. Hippopotamuses are considered one of the most dangerous animals in the world. Ancient Egyptian kings were often depicted fighting these beasts to demonstrate their power and valor. Although later pharaohs did not engage in such activities, it is believed that early pharaohs and kings of ancient Egypt had to hunt hippos to show their importance and prove their worthiness to rule their population. Therefore, the historical account from Maindo states that Menes, whom many consider to be the same as Namur, was taken by a hippopotamus and died. Number 24. Egyptians never spoke of pharaonic death. Knowing the cause of death of a pharaoh is truly challenging because ancient Egyptians never spoke, let alone wrote, about the death of their leaders. Being killed by a powerful beast was not a shame in ancient Egypt. If we know anything about Namur's death, it's because the historian Maindo, an ancient Egyptian of Hellenistic times, born in Egypt but living in the Greek world, 
wrote about it. This cultural difference is what allowed him to write about the death of the first pharaoh. Number 25. His body was never found. The location of Narmer's body has puzzled archaeologists for over two centuries. Early pharaohs were buried in structures called mastabas, mudbrick constructions whose Arabic name means bench to sit on. Each pharaoh of the early dynastic period was buried within a mastaba until the end of the third dynasty when the iconic pyramids we know today were constructed. Therefore, the hypothesis was that Namur would be buried in one of the many mastabas found in the fields of Saqqara. However, none of these mastabas bears Namur's name, so this hypothesis could not be verified. Number 26. His tomb was eventually found. In 1964, Professor Werner Kaiser of the German Archaeological Institute in Cairo identified Narmer's name in an inscription at a site called El Kab, a burial ground for the pre-dynastic royalty and early kings of Egyptian dynasties. However, this site had suffered many looting and robberies over the previous five millennia. Various artifacts bearing Narmer's name were found throughout the area making it impossible to pinpoint the exact location of the pharaoh's tomb. Number 27. Debate about his burial location. To this day, archaeologists and Egyptologists continue to debate whether Namr was buried in Saqqara or El Kab. This question remains unanswered and will continue to be so until the pharaoh's body is found and can be conclusively identified. Number 28. His wife could have been the first female pharaoh. In the 19th century, the tomb of Queen Nithotep, Namr's possible wife, was discovered. Her tomb was elaborately decorated with many details and inscriptions, leading some scholars to believe that she might have been more than a mere royal consort. Nithotep's name is found on some serechs of the time, facade decorations of palaces with the name of the pharaoh and the falcon, symbolizing the god Horus. Due to this, some specialists argue that Nithotep had her own Sarek, implying that she could have been a pharaoh herself after Narmer's death. However, this hypothesis is not universally accepted. Number 29. His successor was Aha. Narmer was succeeded as pharaoh by Aha, who ruled Egypt between 3100 and 3050 BC. Aha is believed to have been Narmer's son, although some associations have also been made with the possible identity of Menes or even as another name for Narmer. According to some historical accounts, Aha continued his father's military campaigns into Nubia while seemingly ignoring Canaan. Archaeological evidence from his reign indicates a strong interest in religious rituals and the construction of mastabas, making him a precursor to pyramid construction. The extensive necropolis of Memphis dates back to his reign. Number 30. The Other Kings of the First Dynasty After Narmer, three kings continued the first dynasty of ancient Egypt. Jer, whose reign spanned the era of 3050 to 300 BC, emerges as a pivotal figure believed to have been the progeny of Aha, his predecessor. Jer's reign marked a distinguished epoch defined by the construction of grand palaces and ambitious military expansion, echoing the dynasty's determination to cement its dominion. Succeeding the enigmatic Jer, King Jed ascended the throne, ruling over Egypt's destiny from approximately 300 to 2990 BC. Regrettably, scant records survive to illuminate the intricacies of his reign leaving a veil of mystery draped over this transitional period of Egypt's history. Yet, the chronicles do not end there. Mernith emerges onto the stage as a remarkable regent. Fulfilling this role on behalf of her son Den, Mernith's legacy intertwines with the delicate task of governance during this juncture. As her son's guardian and guide, she navigated the complexities of the kingdom, etching her name into the lineage of power. These monarchs, obscured by the sands of time, offer glimpses into a foundational era where the pillars of power were being erected, and the echoes of their reigns reverberate through the corridors of history. Number 31. A Long Line of Dynasties Narm remarked the beginning of Egyptian civilization as its first pharaoh, initiating a long history of rule in the region. 
Over the course of more than two millennia and seven centuries, 30 dynasties have been identified in Egypt, spanning from around 3100 to 332 BC. The Narmer palette was discovered in the main cache of the Temple of Horus in Hierakonpolis. Although this temple was built centuries after Narmer's time, the presence of this important historical document within it attests to Narmer's significance. In his own time, Narmer was recognized as an important pharaoh. A true legacy. Before we wrap up, I wanted to take a moment to express our heartfelt gratitude. We've hit 1,000 subscribers. Thank you all for being a part of this journey and for your incredible support. Your likes, comments, and subscriptions mean the world to us. Let's keep growing and exploring history together. Until next time.